In this video, we're going to consider the trigonometric form of complex numbers. So in the previous lesson, we went over what a complex number was. It has a real part and an imaginary part. And now we're going to talk about how to graph them. So the graph of a complex number, a plus bi, is a vector that extends from the origin out to the point a comma b. And a coordinate plane with a complex number assigned to each point is referred to as a complex plane. Now the x-axis is the real axis, and the y-axis is the imaginary axis. And if you'll recall, the conjugate of the complex number a plus bi is a minus bi. Okay, so now we have a definition. If z equals a plus bi is a complex number, then the absolute value, which is also called the modulus, of z is the distance from the origin to the point a b in the complex plane. If this distance is denoted by r, then r equals, and here we have absolute value or magnitude of a plus bi, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So this is going to remind you a lot about when we were studying polar and how to convert from rectangular to polar coordinates because it's pretty much the same idea. Okay, so here, example one, find the absolute value of one minus i. So that's gonna be the square root, a is one, so I have one squared, plus b is negative one squared, so this would be rad two. This is also called the modulus. All right, example two, represent the complex number geometrically along with its opposite and its conjugate. Okay, so first thing I notice is that this complex number is not simplified, I have to clean it up. So this would give me one plus four i plus four i squared. And then we know four i squared, that's gonna be negative four, and I have negative four plus one, so this means z is equal to negative 3 plus 4i. So let's plot z first. Now remember, the x-axis is our real axis, and the y-axis is the imaginary axis. So this is the imaginary axis. This is the real axis. And z is equal to negative 3 plus 4i. So I'm going to go 4 up in the imaginary direction and 3 to the left in the negative real direction. So z would be right here. Okay, they also want us to graph the opposite of z and the conjugate of z. So the opposite of z is if I take that complex number and I multiply both the real and imaginary parts by a negative, you just switch the signs. So that would be 3 minus 4i. That's the opposite of z. And then z conjugate, we know, would be negative 3 minus 4i. So let's add both those to our graph. So 3 minus 4i, let me add more markings here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3 minus 4i, that would be right here. That's the opposite of z. And then the conjugate of z, negative 3 minus 4i, would be right here. That's z conjugate. Okay, let's look at one more like that. Here we have negative 3i times 2 minus i. So first thing I want to distribute so I can clean this up. So this is going to be negative 6i plus 3i squared, which we know is negative 3. So that means z equals negative 3 minus 6i. And then I also need to plot the opposite of z, which would be positive 3 plus 6i, and the conjugate of z, which would be negative 3 plus 6i. So all three of these I'm going to plot on my graph. All right. So here's my imaginary axis. Here's the real axis. One, two, three. I'm going to go three the other way. And then up and down six, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So z is negative three minus six i. Here's the original z. Opposite of z is positive three, positive six i. And then z 
bar or the conjugate of z, negative 3 plus 6i. Oh, no, it's right here. That's the conjugate. Okay. Good. Now, by definition, the argument of the complex number z equals a plus bi is the smallest positive angle theta from the positive real axis, you could think of it like the positive x-axis, to the graph of z. So when we measure theta, it's always going to be the smallest positive angle measured from the positive real axis. So think the positive x-axis. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to write the trig form of a complex number. So let z equal a plus bi. We already talked about r, which is the modulus of z, is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And if theta is the argument of z, then the trigonometric form of z is given by z equals r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, which you could abbreviate and write r cis theta. C stands for the cosine, i is the i here, and then s stands for sine. Okay, where r is the modulus of z and theta is the argument of z. So here, example 3a, express the complex number in trigonometric form with theta between 0 and 2 pi. So first thing, let's figure out what r is. So r is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So it's going to be negative 10 squared plus 10 squared. So that's square root of 200, which is going to be 10 rad 2. And then now I need to figure out what theta is. Well, you're going to use tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is equal to b over a, which in this case is negative 1. But remember, we have to be careful in order to figure out what theta is based on the point and look at what quadrant it's in. So here the real part is negative and the imaginary part is positive. Right? The real part's negative, imaginary part's positive. So where is that point? It's over here, right? There's negative 10, there's positive 10. So since we're in quadrant 2, then I know theta has to be 3 pi over 4. Okay? So you could write z in the following form. z is 10 rad 2 cis 3 pi over 4. Good. It's basically switching to polar. Same process. Okay, example B. We have square root of 3 minus i. So first things first, let's get r. So r is equal to the square root of the square root of 3 squared. So that would just be 3 plus negative 1 squared. So this is rad 4, which is 2. And then tangent of theta equals negative 1 over rad 3. This angle, since the real part's positive, the imaginary part's negative, is in quadrant 4. So that means theta is equal to 11 pi over 6. So I could write this as z equals 2 cis 11 pi over 6. Okay, looks good. Now let's look at another example here where the angle is not one that comes straight from the unit circle that we've memorized. Okay, negative 2 minus 7i. So r is going to be the square root. We have negative 2 squared plus negative 7 squared. So this is the square root of 4 plus 49. So r is rad 53. Okay. And then tangent of theta is going to be negative 7 over negative 2, which is 7 halves. But keep in mind, this point is in quadrant 3. And tan inverse, if it's positive, is going to give me an angle in quadrant 1. So I need to add pi, that way the angle will be in quadrant 3. So z is equal to rad 53 cis tan inverse of 7 halves plus pi. Okay? Because this would be in quadrant 1 since tan inverse's range is restricted, right? From negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But I need this to be in quadrant 3. How do I know that? Because 
both the real and imaginary parts are negative. Okay, one more like this, example D, two minus three I. So R is equal to the square root of two squared plus negative three squared. So this would be the square root of four plus nine, so 13. And then tangent of theta equals negative three over two. And where is theta? Theta is in, it's an element of quadrant four, right? Since the real part's positive and the imaginary part's negative. Okay, well now let's think about it. If I take tan inverse of something that's negative, then the angle will come out between negative pi over two and zero. And my directions on the problem was that theta had to be positive. So I just need to take um, the angle and add two pi to it, okay? And then if you'll remember, tangent is odd, so do, um, and tan inverse is odd as well. So that negative can get pulled outside. So I can write this as negative tan inverse of 3 halves plus 2 pi, which looks a lot better to write it as 2 pi minus tan inverse of 3 halves. So now I'm going to write z as rad 13 cis 2 pi minus tan inverse of 3 halves. Okay, those last two were tricky, I know. Good, and then <clears throat> now we're gonna go the other way. So here, these uh, um, complex numbers are already written in trig form, and now we're gonna write them in standard form, a plus bi, so it's actually much easier to go this way. Um, we have 12 cis four pi over three, so you have 12 times, and then now you just gotta think, oh, what's cosine of four pi over three? So that's negative one half plus i, times sine of four pi over three, that's oh, negative rad three over two. Okay, and then I'm gonna just distribute the 12, and we get negative six minus six rad three i. Okay, looks good. Now notice here this angle is given a little weird. Here's my theta, right? And so I have rad 10 times cosine theta plus I sine theta. And basically this means that tangent of theta is equal to three. Okay, well let's just draw out a triangle so we could figure out what sine and cosine of that same angle would be. Okay, so Here's theta, tangent's gonna be opposite over adjacent. That means that hypotenuse is rad 10. So then now I have rad 10 still sitting outside. Cosine of theta, that's gonna be one over rad 10. No, I didn't rationalize because watch what's gonna happen in a second. Plus I times sine of theta is gonna be three over rad 10. And then now when I distribute the rad 10 across, it's gonna cancel. So that's why I didn't rationalize. And this is going to be 1 plus 3i. Okay. So knowing how to write a complex number in trig form is going to be very important for the next um, lesson um, that we're going to go over. So make sure you practice and master this because it'll be the first step in solving other problems.